Prepare to have your noses disrespected, Absolutely. people. It's disrespected nose. It is. No music, no, no voiceover, no. no rubbish. No, well, that's arguable. Today we are working on yet another dirty white Nissan. We've spent a little bit of time working on a dirty white Nissan, a real wheel drive one. This is a front wheel drive one from the same era. It's awesome, it's one of my favorite cars, it smells good. Now, according to Nissan though, this is not disrespected nose, is it, Martin? No. It's disrespected bong hose. Yep, it is. What was going on at Nissan headquarters in the late 80s, Martin? So this is a genuine Nissan workshop manual from 1990. And I was having a bit of a flick through and I did just notice that they have instructions in here of how to fix your engine, but also how to set up certain apparati <laughs> what is he doing? As many Nissan owners. Well, there's two pictures that I'm concerned about. This what is, is going on there? That's, but also this one. Like, that's a very extensive apparatus, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, he's got yeah. his little one for when he's in a hurry, but then when he's going to camp out for a bit with his <laughs> mates, basically like a bucket thing. Yes. Um, that actually a, appears to be a dual filtration. Do you know I what I mean? So. Like it's kind of going through here, down into here, into there, and, yeah. then, and then into there. I'd highly recommend you look up a Friends of Rom song called She Only Loves Me For My Bucket, You'll Work Out The Rest. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that, that's what we're trying to work out. So the good thing is we have a manual here that can help us fix basically everything on this car, and that is extremely exciting. Why? Because it's an old car, and sometimes this stuff's a bit puzzling. Now, if you remember way back in our very first Super Turbo episode ever, we had to get a friend of ours to translate. We had like one sheet. Now we got the whole book. That's pretty exciting. This is evolution, people, right here. Um, so there's a few things to uh, work on on this vehicle, um, a few things to fix. The car also just turned 100, 1,000 Ks. Yep. Which means uh, timing belt. Means timing belt. There's a but little hang, hang with us, people. Get a bucket of popcorn. Yep. Get a couple of drinks. Yep. Get a lighter. Some non-alcoholic ginger beer. Light your sparklers. Get some snacks on. Put your feet up. And just relax as you embark on the inane bullshit that is going to be today's episode. So we don't actually know what... What, what we're talking what about. What to do, what we're talking about, or, or exactly how this is, gonna, this is gonna end up. But what I do know is it needs a timing belt and we have deliveries in the boot of this vehicle. Should we take the people? Look, come, come on over. Come look. There's a bunch of boxes in the boot and like all good things on the internet, we can unbox them. What have we got in here, Martin? I'll hold this up because it's not, oh no, it's, it is holding itself up. Oh, it's so cute. A dump pipe. Now, Martin, a dump pipe a gasket, should though. give us more power. Should give us more power. Without having to do anything else. Pretty much. But that, that is the most complex part of the exhaust I system change. I don't think that's from Japan. I think that's from somewhere else. I think that's from UK. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Rob from Import Monster sent us this stuff, which is freaking awesome. Um, but he also sometimes chucks in little magazines, which are, which are mad. Look at that while I work out what's in the box. I'm going to find something good in here, Mark. Oh, oh, I think you... Look, I think I know what these are. Dude, downforce springs. Oh. Super turbo springs. Doesn't it already have springs in it? Um, I don't remember. I think it's got the factory ones because I think it was a bit scrubby. We're going to lower it, Martin. This, all suspension stuff, all genuine Nissan. Basically, the only stuff that was left in Japan available is all the parts to recondition the suspension. So the rubber things, the rain boot things, Look the bump thing, stops. Dude. Look at this little van. Cool. RX-7, little mad van. Awesome. This is the Pista Resistance. It's called the Pista Resistance. The Pista Resistance. It turns out, here's the pizza. thing. So recently, in the 180 SX episode, I said, here's the Pista Resistance. It's the Type X wing. It didn't actually fit. I asked a French person, Martin, this yeah. is going to blow your wormhole yep. 14,000 kilometres, which is probably the distance from here to France. Yep. Not only do they not say Pista Resistance in France. It's not a thing. It's not even. It's not like, a I, word. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's not even a word. They're too busy playing Patonk. Patonk. This is the airbox that we took out in Japan. Remember when we oh. released the, the honk? Oh, yes. So that's the airbox. So Rob sent the airbox, which is cool. Um, and some bracketry. That's the, other, that's the other end of the airbox, which just, it silences the, the honk. And I don't know why you would want to silence anyone's honk. We wrote a whole song about this car called Super Honk. Brilliant There's song. a link down below. And the, the music was made out of the honks made that we recorded from this car. So, so have to check it out. That's all the leftover vacuum lines and stuff we replaced as well when we were in Japan, which is cool. That's some new vacuum line we got when we were in Japan from Autobax or wherever it was. 
This is the exciting bit though. That is a full timing kit for this vehicle. Bearing, belt, look at that. Nissan Motor, pit work, Nissan Motor car. Hey, how come it says pit work and Nissan? Is pit work by Nissan? Well, lots of the stuff that came in the 180SX said pit work, said pit work on it, but it was Nissan genuine. So maybe that's like it's, their, it is. their like retail thing. Well, Don't that know. is exciting. So that's the stuff we have to fix on it. Um, and a handful of other little bits and pieces. So we're just gonna get my super turbo just going. So it's been off the road. Oh, that's the other thing. The reason we even have it here and are working on it is it actually died. When I was driving it recently, it stopped driving, which sucks because I love this car and it's always been so reliable, especially at 100K and 80Ks an hour racing GTRs in Japan. Um, anyway, it stopped working. The reason it stopped working was the original fuel pump died and so I replaced it before we dynoed it recently, recently like a year ago. Um, I replaced the fuel pump and I to do that, you have to pull the tank out. I did it on my back, it really sucked. So the fuel pump I put in was the only one I had. I have a feeling it's actually too big. If you put a fuel pump that's too big, it circulates too much fuel. It over, basically overwhelms the rest of your fuel system, um, which is a bad thing. And then it ends up drawing too much current, pops fuses, has a bad time. So I think I need to review that and just take it out, check I didn't stuff something up, check it's not blocked, check all the filters and everything and just fix it. On a hoist it's easy, we can just drop the tank and we can just fix it. Man, I reckon we should get a couple of suits like this to wear when we drive this car down to go get a barn me later. Okay. You know what I mean? That's a Either that cultures. or this could be you and me right here. Oh yeah. Don't you think that looks a bit more like you, know you what and I mean? me? Looks like our fashion. We could be the BTS of the super turbo world. What's going on here? Oh, that's a doctor. Uh, Martin, what this are we gonna cool. do? I suggest we put it up. Yeah, let's look. And see about, let's just do the dump pipe first. All right. Opening the bonnet just so we uh, get a little bit more light. We'll probably actually take this off because reverse opening is cool, but when you're trying to work at the front of the engine, it just gets in the way and it's four bolts to get rid of it. But we'll go up in the air first and just see what's going on underneath. Hey Martin, before we do that, this could be bad or it could be good. But do you reckon we could get one of these, the Ryobi Bendy, and just sit it, where's the exhaust coming out? Front, where the bonnet is in the way. Oh, over it's there. It's covered under all that crap, so this is why it might Let's be. Let's just do that. It and might just try and fight us see a bit. What, see what happens. Up periscope. This exhaust is so good. This is a Fujitsubu exhaust. Is that how you say it? Fujitsubu, yeah. The question I have though, dude, is why? Why husbandry? Like why not? Why not wifery? Ah. Oh. Like what's the actual? There's got to be a reason, right? I think that's just because of the male skew on the world. You reckon? Like, why is it called and, and not? Oh, that's a really good point. Um, are you talking about welding? Yes. Yeah. What are you talking about? I don't know. That's why I asked you. Okay. But do they have cow husbandry? No. What's that called? That's just called big balls. Do you reckon people breed geese? They do, don't they? I don't know, man. But all I know is my mum's got a quite extensive library of books. And one of them, because we used to live on a goat stud, as you know, uh, is called The Art of Sheep Husbandry. Oh, right. No, Goat Husbandry. It's goat the Husbandry. Art, the Art of Wait, Goat Husbandry. So your husband, your husband goats as well? I think so. Remember that book we had, which was The Art of um, yeah, Sheep Husbandry, and it had dating tips? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the one we got in New Zealand. Yeah. All right, Martin, that. this is off on? already. Yeah, Look at that. It. In the bin. What a nice See piece of pipe. This pipe's as nice as the one that old mate's smoking in the book. All right. Now it is only 9.30 or so in the morning, but that doesn't mean that it's too early for a barn me. Do you do the whole bag, you mutton? Of sauce? Yeah. Absolutely. The whole bag? All of it, dude. Okay. Oh, it's kind of chunky at the bottom. All right. Dude, you want some facts about barn me? Uh, I some think people I'm might not get know some this. whether I want them or not, so I guess Some so. people might not, want, might not actually know what this is. Invented in the 1950s. Someone invented a sandwich? Hmm. Bloody hell, it's good. It's got sausage or whatever meat you want, coriander leaf, cucumber, pickled carrots, pickled daikon, combined with condiments from French cuisine such as pâté. I don't rate the pâté, do you? Is there pâté on? Not in this one. Not very good. 
Oh, you can even fill them with ice cream. They eat it as a, as a sandwich for breakfast or a snack, or in our case, lunch. All right, so we are gonna be fighting with some old rusty stuff here. This has probably never come off, um, or it hasn't for decades. So we're gonna be cutting stuff and messing around. Eventually this car will be getting some new engine management, which is my favorite thing, just to bring these old cars into the future and make them really reliable and make a bit more power as well. Um, this exhaust temperature probe that I'm attempting to take off will be well and truly seized. So there's a good chance that's just gonna stay with the um, manifold, but I thought if I, can, if I can try and get it out, I will. But that's just, um, that's the cat over temp, which you often see in cars, that light's just on. I think in the 180 it's on as well, um, because those sensors are just designed that when that gets too hot, it pops a light. I don't know why they had them, but they did. And um, yeah, so I don't think that's gonna come off, is the honest truth. But we'll try and get the mounts off and maybe the exhaust shields and see what happens. So they are the sway bar mounts, which is mad because I think the ones in there are pretty sad. Um, if you can't get the original factory ones, this is something that an aftermarket mob like Whiteline, who are a sponsor of the show, can make you because often these are also the same on so many different cars, but the manufacturers won't tell you because they're just like, the part number's for a super turbo and that's it. Um, whereas Whiteline might be, you know, often can make you something or find you something that will fit. Uh, and these are also getting easier to be custom made as well. So we'll be able to slap them in, which is good because the old ones, if we go through here, look yeah they look a bit sad they're really hard they're like a bit gross so nice new ones to go on as well which we'll do once we get the dump off i'm a bit done with super super low cars that are a bit useless oh it wrecks them dude what's that it wrecks them i mean maybe that's just a sign of the times yeah maybe but i mean i've, I've said it a few times i like cars you can jump over roundabouts if you want to yeah you know and you, you can you can practically go to the shops, go over speed humps, unless it's a dedicated track car. But even then, dedicated track cars, trying to get them on trailers and tow trucks when they're like slammed to the ground. You know what you need, Martin? A Jeep. Why? You need a Jeep. Why do I need a Jeep? Because there's so many mods available, such a big community around them, they're such good cars. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't keep us. No, nice. dude, I, I was <laughs> actually getting worried. Apparently they are very capable off-roaders. <clears throat> they are. Yeah, shame about everything. <laughs> Whoops. Um, this Was that my Honda? <laughs> Whose Honda? Um, these brakes are a bit sad, hey? Like, look at that. Yeah. Can yeah. you get more? Yeah, you can get discs. They, they match with local Nissan's N14 or something. So that's on the cars as well. The brakes on either once over. But at the moment, I'm taking that off so I can get to this, which then gets me to all the timing belt stuff. Martin, I'm going to undo this plug so that then that sensor can be free and we can remove all of this from its captivity. That sensor will be free balling. I mean falling, like the song. All right, so that is undone, that is undone. There's nothing else holding that on, except for all this stuff here holding it on. <laughs> so do we need to attack it from the top now? Yeah, hold on. It's pretty good condition for its age, man, I have to say. Like, it's pretty good. This is not a new car. By any means. A little bit of surface rust up here actually where the water all splashes. Oh, these... so this is a catted dump pipe. Yeah, it's a catted dump pipe. So we'll add further back where there's room, we'll add like a little high flow cat and stuff. You know what's weird about this cat? There's actually catalysts still in it. Yeah. Because a lot of a lot of um, Japanese cars, they just give it the old broomstick mod. Yep. And um, but that is like it actually still looks Functional, yeah. from what I can see. It probably is. And, um, and the idea also is that these, these engines, there's quite a few people who are actually turning these up and getting good results. Like, they're getting 200 horsepower out of these things. From super turbos? From a one litre, yeah. Really? It's really good. It's really cool. You, but to do that, you need bigger turbos, you need exhausts that, that match. I would, I'd be aiming for, like, a mild power bump. Like, it'd be cool to go from... What does it make now? Like, 70 kilowatts of the something wheels Something like something? that, yeah. We've got a dyno. We should find the footage and do it. But, yeah, like a 20% you know, like increase, a little bit more boost, a little bit of love. Yeah. But you also, you kind of, you know, you can go backwards because the whole point is that it's super turboed, which means supercharged as well. And if you mess too much with the efficiency of it or the whole system, it sort of goes backwards. It's not yes. as fun to drive because it's a very laggy one litre, low yeah, yeah. comp one yeah. litre, which is not going to be fast. Remember when we were in Japan and we had to turn the supercharger off? Yes. And it would just be like nothing, 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 and five grand, and then you go, ah! Yeah. Uh, Martin, are we coming down? Yeah, let's go down. I'll just take this off. And then we can get to, whoa! Look at this. 
You can get to all the timing belt stuff from here and from above, which is cool. Engine mount comes off. I actually did a timing belt in a Nissan Figaro, um, which is the same sort of engine. So this is a MA09 whatever, yep. and MA10 is the Figaro one, but this is all the same. Yeah, cool. But the supercharger is there. There it is. And see how it's on a clutch? So that's the aircon, the massive aircon. Oh, hang on. I got the right way around. Yeah, that's the aircon. <laughs> the aircon's bigger than the supercharger. That's an electromagnetic clutch. So when you press your aircon, it basically opens up and grips the belt. Otherwise, the belt's just free spinning on a bearing. The supercharger here works the same way, which is why when we unplugged it, which the plug's just above it there, um, that's what would turn it off. So it runs off a belt and a pulley system, the same as the aircon. All right, what are we doing, man? Oh, on. On. Let's just get rid of it. In the bin. It's in the way. My 10 mil barely fits because there's been so much paint. Because this car's been painted in Japan at some point. So much paint on it. How many super turbos on the road in Australia do we know? Like less than five? I know of five. Five, yeah. okay. They all got through around the same time that my old one did in the early 2000s where there was like a sort of a, a registration loophole that existed where a lot of um, imports got through like R32 Skylines and stuff as well. And do you guys all hang out, like do little super turbo picnics and no. massage each other's feet and stuff? Most, people are, most people's super turbos are either broken or... Is your thingy fit there? Um. Bolts, yeah, bolts got a lot of paint on it, doesn't it? Yours, I think yours will go. Um, yeah, a lot of them are sort of off the road or, you know, broken, whatever. There's one or two that, there was a couple of guys getting around with them back when I had mine, and since then those ones have just been laid up and not been used. Yeah, okay. It happens, they're old cars. I reckon, man, that's an extensive heat shield. Oh, that's this. Yeah, I reckon the trick with that is to shock, kind of like shock it off. So if we use rattle gun watsies or 12, like six point sockets, yeah. I reckon we're gonna have the best I'm result. Just gonna goose it up a little bit, mate. Sure. So because these bolts are so old and rusty and crusty, there's a very high chance they're gonna break. This heat shield we can redo, we can, you know, we're about to take the dump pipe off, which is what a lot of this attaches to anyway. Um, a good method to try and crack them is with an impact socket, but make sure it's a 6.1. Impact sockets almost always are. Um, if you use a 12 point, there's more chance of it slipping. There's a good chance these are gonna break. I have chucked some um, WD-40 like penetrant on there in advance to try and make it happen, but otherwise it's, oh yes. If you're lucky, they come straight out. Because that they're getting hot, so often, it's constantly being heated up and cooled down, they're very likely to break. These might. Oh, so far, so good. Two more. There's going to be one that won't go, I reckon. Yep. Why are these painted red? The, why are the leads red? Oh, they actually, oh, sorry, they're red covered in black. Yeah. Sorry, I thought it was like a really bad paint job. Come on, come on. Dude, that never happens. When does that ever happen? It's amazing. So yeah, moral of the story, chuck some penetrant on it first. Actually, one of them did break, but it doesn't matter. We'll still be able to get Maybe it off. Maybe these have to come Leads out. might have to okay. come off, yeah. Um, and then we'll obviously replace them. Although they probably attach to the uh, dump pipe, which we're getting rid of anyway. <laughs> Making it easy for you. That's should, little, uh... That should expose our mad little factory dump pipe. There's a little access point cut in here to go over that noggin. Yeah. But getting it around that is a different story. Reef it. Are you keeping this part? I don't think it'll fit our new dump anyway. I'm reticent to do that being it's your car, Martin. Do it. No, because I don't want to break it and bend it. Okay. It should be your responsibility to break your own stuff. I think if we get a screwdriver in that back bolt, it'll go. That both cute and small. Oh, look at it. I haven't seen it yet, actually, on this so car. So small and rusty. Yeah, it's all hidden beneath the heat shields. Look at that. Wow, look how deep the spark plugs sit in there. Like so deep in that head, yeah. aren't they? Funny little manifold. Yeah, mad. Well, I reckon so we... We're just oh, look, we're missing a bolt on our dump. We are. I reckon we try and Wait get on. this heat shield in off. That one. We're missing multiple bolts on our dump. That's not a good thing. Um, we'll take this heat shield off and then we spray a bit of WD penetrant on that and the back on the heat shield ones too. I reckon that guy's going to be problematic. Yeah, he is, definitely. Let's see if we can get that off. Yeah, Did just ra no, rounded it straight away. Again, because okay. 12 point, but I can't get a six point on there. Oh, yeah? Yeah, dude. We broke our own rule, though, and they're probably the hardest one we've left to last. But it's interesting that there's so many nuts missing off that dump pipe, hey? Yeah, I mean, where are they? I wonder how bad, how necessary this heat shield is. I know they were really into heat shields in the day, but I wonder if we just, like, 
heat wrap our dump, our new dump pipe, which is smaller anyway, if that would be sufficient. This is an interesting thing I just noticed on our torch the other day, like it's a Tool Pro torch. You got a torch thing, but then it's got a magnet on the end of the torch. Oh, that's red. Yeah, I know. I, didn't I, know I only that. noticed it the other day. So Perfect the light really, so is you can pointing see. at the magnetized and like stop right it. now where I just dropped my, drop my socket. It torches. It's just it's like that's it's not an expensive thing. It's just a very basic torch and it runs on normal batteries. But that I thought that's actually quite a clever thing. If you could set how bright you wanted it, you could call it a torch wrench. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, we're good. Sweet. We're going. But it's one of those situations that as it comes out, my tool oh. will end up locked. Maybe a. Uh, I'm already locked in there. Now. Oh no. <laughs> I'm taking our alternator off. Dude, I, reckon the, I don't reckon the bolt's that long. I reckon you'll make it. Do you reckon you'll make it? You reckon? I don't know. You're committed now, though. And then otherwise, you can use one of these pipe wrench things, which is also good, because six-sided, and you can get it on there. Um, they sort of work, too. But yeah, the, the, the key with any of this old rubbish is six-point or impact, I reckon. <laughs> Have a go at that. What's your favourite car to work on that we've ever had? I reckon right up there in the top five at number five is your white 180, dude. Oh, yeah. Don't you reckon that was fun That's to work on? That's on my list as well. Any, any 180, any S13, except for a GTIR. Oh, really? Yeah, well, they actually, seem a bit too tight. They have the same issues that this has, like in terms of the era and stuff of it. It's all a bit complicated and yeah. old weird Nissan front-wheel drive action. Dude, this heat shield's coming off. That's amazing. And then if you crack the 12 that's, that's under gone. there, that dump pipe is gone. Great. In the bin. I'm excited. Um, um, BRZ is an easy car to work on. Yeah, that was it's good. It's just easy to bolt stuff onto, and they just work. There we that go. that one surprised me actually as to how nice it was to drive, how it turned out. I, I I did not expect it to be that good. In fact, the 180 and the BRZ, we need to go for a drive. I still own the white 180 as well, by the way. So we have the white BRZ. The, the white BRZ. Of course, I own the white 180. Uh, the white BRZ. <laughs> so there's the white totally stock one. We got the blue turbocharged one, and then the white 180. And I think we need to do a little bit of a, a bit of a drive off with all of those, Martin. No rego on that white one, though. Hey, no. and I don't reckon it's ever going to have rego. You don't think it will? Not in New South Wales. Like I reckon that's just oh yeah, too hard yeah. basket. Controversially as well, Civic easy to work on. That car was a Is nugget, it? and that like just like broke our spirit in terms of dealing with an unfinished project and the lessons learned there. But in terms of actually civics, I reckon they're put together really nicely. Yeah. Like, you know, the way that the tools and you can get to everything, like it, it makes sense why they're so popular, especially for first cars and first cars people modify. But hard to get over the line as real like fast performance cars. Because, you know, 10, 20 years ago, people didn't really take them seriously. Like if you had a turbo Skyline or something and someone's like, oh, I've got an Integra. So I don't take them seriously now, but yes, yeah. But I like, you know, point. I've got an Integra. People are like, oh, cool story. That might be sort of fun, right? And I know at the track they can be quick, but in terms of just like street cars and straight line performance, they just, they weren't there. Yeah. But how easy they are to work on, I reckon they're excellent. I don't know if I'm undoing this or rounding it off. I think I'm undoing, oh, I'm undoing it. Yeah, dude, the whole thing's moving. Great. Winning, how good's that? Do you want to grab the other dump? And we just have a look and see if it's yeah. actually gonna I do will. what it has to do? That's pretty exciting, gonna, Martin. I don't think it's gonna bolt on underneath. But that can be fixed with a welder very easily. I really hope it fits, hey. There's so much stuff, again, that's coming off. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like Did that bolt so... just come off? Yeah, it's oh, down cool. on the floor somewhere. So this here, this might have to go, go down. down. Um, or is it like locked in? <laughs> <laughs> What's holding it in there? It's pretty big, isn't it? I know it's, it's, it's in two pieces. Oh, maybe it's gonna go. Yeah. Oh, you're on, a, you're on some kind of line at the bottom there, I think. Some kind of line you can probably pull out. No, that's way. attached to this. Do you want me to go up so you can get it from underneath? Yes, please. Yeah, it's going, oh, mate. Yeah, it dude. just goes. We're winning, aren't we? Everything with these, these is so just far. Uh, doing exactly what we think it should do. It's working. Um, i got a feeling when this um, comes out, this might just fall on my feet. So can you just get ready to grab that, please? The bracket or the dump? The dump. So yeah, this thing just did 100,000 Ks, which means it needs a timing belt. Um, also, it's probably just hasn't been done in forever. Timing belts, kits for an engine like this, front wheel drive ones, are cheap. Um, and usually you do get to them underneath. Some cars, there's very little access, but you do have to get, to get to the timing belt, which is all in behind there. You have to get basically all of this off. Good time to change the belts. And we will be able to get these locally because it says what they are, 4PK825. Um, that one actually looks kind of okay. 
that one's okay. Oh, no, that one needs to be replaced. The supercharger one gets a pretty hard time if you think about it constantly being clicked in and out and having all that load on and off it. Uh, we'll have to look at the bearings in here as well. But all that could come off. I just mark where everything is and all of it can come off. Then basically you take the plastic covers off, take the crank pulley off at the top, and then you just make sure that everything's lined up, keep note of where it is, turn it around to top dead center, put the timing belt on, put the tensioner on, all back together, done. So timing belts can be scary. In some cars, they really, really suck, um, particularly certain diesel utes. But in this one, it should be pretty straightforward. The figure I want only took an hour or two. Martin, this is coming. You getting it? Is, that is the dump coming out? That, please? Yes, I can. Look at this bracket. And now. Manufacturers love it. Dude, well done. There it is. What a funny looking dump pot. So that. New one's over there on the bench. Is being replaced with that. Yeah, that's nice. What a man. difference. That's a nice. I mean, that component there, a lot of that bulk is the catalytic converter, which I'll have to change places somewhere, but it's gone from that to that. Awesome, man. Uh, and we can put our oxygen sensor in there. When we put our Haltech and stuff, we can put our wideband in there. Yep. We've got two options there to use. Great. Um, I don't think, yeah, there's not much else to see. And everything else under here is pretty clean. So that can just be upgraded. Great. And the gasket looks good too. And I don't think we're going to easily get that gasket because I reckon that's... Can saying? someone look up on Facebook recycling cat converters, what they're worth? They're worth about 400 of those bins. Uh, recycle the fits. cat. Yeah, of course we will. I'm recycling oh, it. Oh, you're going down? In see the garbage truck. Yep, yeah, bring right, it down. Coming down. I reckon it's going to hit whatever that is. That uh, yeah, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit at all. No, not at all. I don't know. Because even if I could line that up with where it was meant to be, like... You can see it's about an inch off from clearing that. I reckon it'll melt the alternator. Oh, I don't, oh, look, you can, you can try it. But it's made for this car, isn't it? Oh yeah, but it's custom made, so who knows if it's actually gonna, actually gonna go. And sometimes this stuff's made, you know, on a mock-up without an alternator in place. Oh, that's interesting. So the alternator runs off the aircon compressor. Normally the alternator belt goes back to the crank or you've got like two or three different belts on the crank. Yeah. On this, you've only got two belts. One goes to the aircon and then the aircon's got another one that goes to this. But the aircon's clutching, so it's not actually doing anything. Well, no, the, the pulley's turning, but the inside, like the pulley's always turning and then the inside of the aircon's clutching yeah. and grabbing it. Yeah, but okay. yeah, in terms of, it's interesting that it runs off a separate thing. It's mm. weird. I'm glad we were just talking about how we, um, we we're winning. That wasn't hiding us and we are winning and that's such a great day. It's just that weird position where it will drop and go on, but the aircon hard line's in the way, and because it's full of aircon gas, we can't take it off. And the turbo return's in the way, but that's a hard line, so you can't actually take it off the sump anyway. So I'm not sure how you're supposed to get that on. I don't know how that happened. Like, how was that created and removed from a, from a stock car? It was that second hand? Yeah. It's been used before on a, on a March Super Turbo, okay. which makes me think that it will fit some way. I just don't know what the secret is. All right, let's at least see if this is going to work. What's it, it clashing with now? There's a pipe down the bottom. The, the return, oil return. Does, does it all just fix itself once you get it on though? That's what I'm wondering. Because it it's very tight in there, so it's often like this. We just need to... It's hitting the aircon, isn't it? Mostly. And that oil return is a, is a hard line, so I can't actually move it. If it was hitting the rubber, that'd be okay. It's so close. Isn't it? Annoyingly so. It almost like that dump pipe needs to be two-piece, doesn't it? Because you would be able to get the top bit on and then just join in the bottom. I will just remake this if I have to, because I've got those bends, so I'll just, I'll just cut it and, and make a tighter bend on it. Yeah. If I have to, I'd rather not. I can't even see if this flange fits though. Do you want to try? Like, see, see how close that is now? That's a couple of mils away from, yeah, that's the closest it's been right there. It's just hitting on the, it's hitting on the air con. I don't think we're going to get away from that, unfortunately. No, that shit doesn't fit. It does not fit. Can be made to fit. <laughs> All right. Good. You've heard it here first, everybody. It's going to be easier if I send the It not only video. doesn't fit your Honda, it doesn't fit your Super Turbo either. So the answer to this is, I don't have that flange, so I'd have to copy that flange. This dump's actually fine, it's all stainless. So I will just be able to cut it through there and put a tighter 90 on it that just comes down maybe 20 mil less that way, and that should clear it. But I'll put everything in place because I can cut it and then try and fit a bend in there. It is a pretty tight bend. Um, and it's a nice collector and everything they've made there. Like it's actually done really well. Uh, but yeah, 
don't fit, unfortunately. Might have been mocked up in a car that doesn't have everything else, doesn't have the alternator in that spot. Potentially it was mocked up in a bay for a car that's getting a full resto. Who knows? I'll find out. Either way, I should be able to recycle it. Expensive paperweight though, wasn't cheap. So the brakes are very corroded, probably very old. And also in Sydney, we've had tons of rain for about six months straight. So anywhere you park your car, indoors, outdoors, unless it's like hermetically sealed, it sits on like water. And in my garage where I keep this, there's sometimes the floor gets a bit wet and I think it hasn't helped. And there's some moisture that's come up from underneath. I noticed it on the Civic as well. Um, but anyway, these brakes were due for replacement and I want to upgrade them. So now's probably the right time to do it. Some of these bushes I'm going to take apart, like the steering tie rod ends and the ball joints, they will be a standard size. So I'll be able to get them hopefully locally. Um, and if not, uh, Japan or, or get some made, particularly the bushes. You can see just how old and munted these ones were as well. Oh yeah. Not so good. we have some more of these already, right? Yeah. That should fit. Hopefully. Genuine Nissan parts. The rest of the sway bar bushes actually look okay. Those ones are still supple, so they're probably all right. Don't need to replace them. But the ball joints in here, at the bottom of the control arms and the front and back ones, like they are definitely munted. You can see them sort of peeling and falling apart. So I will definitely replace them. So pull them out, measure them up and see if I can find anything. So I've just put a little bit of uh, castor oil grease in these. And uh, that there is a nice little upgrade Look at that, just updating things, making them all mad. Look at that. It's unreal. Beautiful. That's awesome. This sway bar, maybe use a little visit with the sandblaster like we did in the RX-7, possibly. Yeah. But I'll pull some of the other bushes out first and have a look at them. Apparently people in the UK really like this person called the Queen. Yeah, they who do. Who lives in a big thing. It's a thing, yeah. The and they, um, which is, just sounds so foreign She's to also us here our in Queen, dude. She's not my queen. Well, she is. Well, I don't have you're, a queen. You're in the Commonwealth of whatever in Australia and you technically do have a queen. The only queen I have is an S13 Sylvia. And I don't even have that one anymore. But, um, no, I don't have a queen. Oh, look at these, I dude. Don't think. And I Bushy. certainly don't read Queen magazine or whatever. The, like, people actually read about what she's doing, They're what she's up to, by. and they just... They buy tourist things like a picture of her on a cup. It's weird, man. Yeah, they're fascinated, aren't it's they? It's weird. Are you from the UK and do you love the Queen? Can you explain the thing to us, please? What's the deal? Like, what's you going on over there? We don't have anything like that over no, here. No, I've seen her a couple of times. Have you? Yeah, I've seen her. I was, I was like, years ago, I was in Paris, I think. Yeah. And just walking down the road, being a tourist. And then all these, like, what are they called? Gendarme, gendarmes or something, the cops, basically just stopped everyone. And they had a, a, hundreds of them against yeah. just stopping people from stepping off the footpath. What's going on? And then there was like a couple of cop cars and then down the road went cleaning. Oh, right. Yeah. I might even have a photo of it. If I do, we should put it in the thing. Wow. That's um... And I was like, it's a queen. And then we got on my day and then I got some chips. Wow. <laughs> and curry. They like curries over in the UK. Is yes. it, is that, I think no, I was in France. Oh, you're in France. Sorry, yeah. I was thinking of the UK. Eating the croissant. What man. are they like there? They oh, like... Um... Their food used to suck and now it's good. Did you know that? No. Yep. I ate a snail once. You should only eat a snail at a restaurant. Don't eat one from the backyard or a slug or anything. That's yeah, no, super it's a bad. Bad, bad idea. Um, but one that's properly prepared. Had yeah. garlic and butter and stuff on it. Was it good? Don't need to do it again. What did it taste like? Uh, like a salty squid. Really? So it tasted like just some meaty stuff. With garlic with and With garlic all over it. it. Yeah, you can put garlic and butter on everything and it tastes good, doesn't it? Pretty much. Out come the suspension bushes. Can you visit our white line friends? I can. And get them? <laughs> Just all them. And I'll give you the control on bushing as well. Just those. I reckon, I reckon they'll, they'll, that'll match something else out there. They even look like bloody Sylvia S13 ones. And I'll give you this back bushing as well. I will find some, Martin. Legendary. And meanwhile, you can get all excited about your timing belt. Yeah, control arm out. So now I'll be able to try and get that bush and that ball joint and that bush because they're all munted. That one's probably not as bad, but the ball joint's completely blown out. You can see there, that's just gonna get shitty over time. Okay, so these control arms are going back in, which makes me really sad, but I wanna be able to move the car around. I have ordered um, some replacement control arms. That's apparently how it's done with these cars. Some of these bushes are just no longer available, but you can buy the whole arm um, out of Europe or the UK. So these are going back in, so I'm gonna move the car around. I've found some calipers off an N14 Pulsar. Same problem with the brakes. 
this is an ST only part. So even the K10 micros in the rest of the world use different brakes. The closest you can get is an Australian delivered N14 Pulsar, which is basically the same size. They're actually an upgrade for K11 micros, but on the K10, you can bolt them on K10 micros. Super turbos use K11 hubs, which means you can use Nissan Pulsar brakes. So I'm gonna get a set of nice new, newish Pulsar calipers and disc, which means I can use brand new discs and pads, which is awesome, and put them on. Um, so the suspension stuff is basically sorted for now, aside from waiting for these and waiting for my calipers. Uh, and then we're just gonna move on to do the timing belt, and then that's kinda it until I get that dump pipe working. So I'm gonna measure up the bush for this gear linkage. Again, cause this is a super turbo and not just a standard micro, chances are some of this stuff is different, but I'm gonna check it by measuring it. See the inside diameter of the bush, which looks like 30 mil. And then the diameter, inside diameter of the actual sleeve, which looks like it is 10 mil, 10 and 30. And then just the overall outside, which looks like it is 40, no, 42, 42, 30 and 10. So I'll draw that up and then cross reference it and see, reference it and see if I can find anything. All right, so next up is timing belt. Um, I wouldn't say it's a fun job on most cars. Um, on this one, at least, it's fairly straightforward. It is the same as a Figaro that I have done once before. So first up, all these belts got to come off and then we need to be able to remove the pulley as well um, and then get access to the timing belt. Engine mount at the top's got to come off, access to the timing belt. It also means we can replace the water pump. So we'll get a bit messy with coolant, but water pumps, if they just sit there for too long, they just rot. Chances are this has never had one this car because it only just hit 100,000 Ks and that's when you are supposed to change it. So it's a good chance it's 30, 30 odd years on the same timing belt. All right, belts off, step one. So that is the, I already took a photo of this. So that 40825 is the aircon drive. That one, the 3PK, is the alternator. And then, this one is the most fun one, which is the supercharger. Also a 4PK. So that should hopefully just come off from the top, like that. Who knows how that one comes off? Pass the tensioner, maybe the tensioner's gonna come off, don't know. Looks like it. No, it's gonna make it. Cool, belt's gone. Next, this off, and then the plastic covers. There's just one random Allen bolt, Allen hex headed, whatever, in the whole car. Everything else has actually come apart really easily, but this one has just got me thwarted. It's definitely metric, but my tool just won't do it. Now what's going on? Got you. So on the cover here it says 100,000 Ks, which I think is when you're supposed to do the timing belt. You can see on this label. Although I've just noticed that someone has scratched, in, scratched into it, 73861, which means it might have been done 26 and a half thousand Ks ago. <laughs> oh well, it still could have been a long time ago, so it's still worth doing. Yeah, there's a bit of corrosion and stuff on the water pump and everything, so we'll replace all that to be safe because it's not that hard to do on a single cam engine like this. I'm just gonna drain the coolant because I have to pull the water pump out. What I want to happen is I want all the coolant to drain down below the level of the water pump uh, so that I'm not getting covered in it when I do finally remove it. So this can go, it's time to replace it anyway. Come on. Here it comes. Ooh. Always messy, always. All right, so timing belt change. Um, the potential for disaster here is if you get it wrong, your engine will be out of time. And if your cam and your crank are out of time and you have an interference engine, which means the valves and the pistons can hit each other, that's a bad time and you're gonna blow stuff up. So it is important to make sure you do it right. Um, check your reference material. Luckily there's, there's YouTube videos of people who've done Figaro's. I've done a Figaro before. It's all exactly the same. Um, I'm just also looking in my micro book to see if there's any pictures that will help just confirm uh, where the timing marks need to be. And I think I just found them here. So you can see in this, some of these pictures, it's got marks of like where the timing's supposed to be. Um, that one versus that one, which actually does look different to the Figaro, so I'm glad I checked. But this is showing how to do a timing belt change. So I'll check to make sure all my timing marks line up. There's a dot here that has to line up with the head. And I think at the bottom, there's one that has to go down. Yeah, so this is the one I need. 
if in the top of the cam, it goes against that part of the head, the little notch, and at the bottom, that dot goes towards the ground uh, directly south, uh, that will be right. So I think we're good. I'll line up the engine, make sure it's right, remove the tensioner, remove the water pump, put all the new stuff in, and then to make sure it's all back in that position, and we'll be good to go. So that little notch there matches that circle. It also happens that this pin ends up at the top. Someone has been in here before, so it has had a timing belt before you can see someone's marked it. But as long as we don't move anything from those positions, the belt should go straight back on. Here is the old tensioner, which hopefully will let me take it off. There's the old tensioner. Yeah, that bearings, it's okay. It just feels a little bit crunchy and yuck, so it's probably time. Even though kilometers wise, it hasn't done the work, I reckon time wise, it absolutely has. So it's a good time to replace this. All right, here is the belt coming off. This is the old belt. Yeah, it doesn't look that old. I mean, it's shiny enough that it's worn everything off it. I think, yeah, years wise, it's definitely done its duty, even though kilometers wise, it probably hasn't done as much as the first one did. In the bin. Yes. Sploosh. A lot of dirt I got on the outside, but inside looks pretty good. These, when they sit for too long, especially if they don't have proper cooling in them, just water, they rot and rust and turn to mush. Um, that's pretty good though. But that one will be replaced because the timing kits come with new water pumps. Cheap insurance, it'll last years and years in the recycling. Next step is to scrape away all the old gasket where the water pump used to seal. It comes with like a paper gasket, but there's also some goo on this one probably because it's been done by a mechanic somewhere, um, probably in Japan, which is kind of cool. Anyway, I'm um, going to scrape it all off, which is a bit of a mission. And then once the water pump's on, it's just attach new tensioner, attach new belt, put it all back together. So pretty straightforward actually on a car like this, compared to something like a Subaru with a million cams and all sorts of special tools required. So this comes with a paper gasket. I'm just running a tiny bit of RTV, mostly just to actually stick the gasket down to it to make sure it doesn't move. And because anyone knows more is better, right? Always more of this stuff is always better. You see it hanging out of sumps, you know, an engine's been apart. So now someone will know that this has been apart too. Well, there won't be a someone because I'm keeping this car till the end of time. <laughs> Gasket goes on. Boom. And it'll stay nicely in place and we can stick it back in the car. All right, belt is going on. Water pump is on. Everything is synced. So my timing belt is on along with a new seal for the front pulley. Um, I also get my new document that I can write how many Ks, I've got no idea what it says, but I'm just gonna write what the Ks are. Um, and then it also comes with uh, new seals for this. These seals are pretty smashed actually. Um, the little seals that go in here to seal it against it. So this can actually give you some new ones. So I'll stick them in and stick these covers back on. There it goes, look at that, all just crusty. So they probably didn't get replaced last time put some new seals in, put it back together, and then we can move on. Timing belt is on, which is very exciting. So the thing would actually start now, um, even without my dump pipe, but I am going to go and get um, some bends to make that pipe, and then tomorrow I'm gonna come back and actually make that and attach it back to the exhaust, because I kinda want all that to just be working and finished with, along with my freshly installed timing belt. Um, and then the only thing that's missing is some of those suspension things which are coming from overseas. So it's gonna take at least a couple of days, if not weeks, to get here. Uh, and then the basic service stuff, oil, coolant, and everything else. And then we'll be pretty much right to go and put some more Ks in it. I did remember actually, I went back and watched one of the videos of doing the suspension the last time we worked on this car. And those upper strut tower thingies are a bit munted. So I do have some new ones. So we might throw them in, in as well. These belts look sort of okay, but I think considering it's gonna be, you know, 50 bucks worth of belts, it might actually be worth just taking all three of them down to super cheap or whatever and just getting the um, equivalent because these will exist in Australia. Sometimes you've got to order them in, but they do exist. They're very, very common. So I might get some new ones of them. So that's it for today. Get some bends, get some new belts, throw them on tomorrow, finish that tomorrow. The thing will then start and drive. I won't do any long distance in it because all the suspension bushes are pretty munted and then get the new arms when they're ready and slap them in and then I can drive it properly. It turns out that my dump pipe came off a March Super Turbo on the other side of the world that had the air conditioning compressor relocated. To make it work, I've just got to use a tighter radius bend using this donut. I can chop it up and then weld it together, making sure that it clears everything in the engine bay.
have noticed that we just respected your nose. That's right, a little bit of voiceover, a little bit of editing. Right now, I just wanted to point out that I'm about to use the WD-40 Super Turbo Edition on the actual Super Turbo that's featured on the can, which I think is pretty freaking awesome. So back here, we are drony drony, and uh, I'm not gonna take this off yet, but this here is the, uh, the filler. So we're gonna just uh, lube that up a little bit to make it a little bit easier to get off. Uh, and then we're meant to have four big 19s here, 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 and here. How many are on your side, Martin? There's only one on this side. <laughs> There's two on the back. Okay, cool. We got 75% of them, so nice. that's good. Uh, and um, then we'll drop that out, take the fuel pump out, swap it to one that flows less, yep. smaller. Downgrade. Yes, that's a thing. Yep. Uh, and then put it back in again, and in the meantime, just keep getting splashed in the face with this. Dripped on. In some cars like this Nugget Nissan, the fuel tank needs to come out completely in order to access the pump. It's only a few bolts and clamps, and it's way easier to remove the tank if it's already empty. And while it's not fun doing this kind of job twice, the answer as to why the car suddenly died on the side of the road recently is most likely in this tank. So it's got to come out. Do you sometimes find yourself feeling a bit stressed or emotions a bit all out of control and you don't know exactly why? Like mental health affects way more people than you think and a lot of people suffer needlessly in silence. Well, there is a great charity which is reachout.com which is mental health support for young people and their families. It's a charity that Marty and I have been involved with for many years and we are proud ambassadors. So if you're struggling or someone you know is struggling, check out reachout.com. We'll put a link down below as well. There are heaps of resources there. You can get further help, you can get information, you can get resources. There's a community of people there that can help and you can tell your story. So you don't need to kind of suffer in silence. You don't need to think that you're meant to be tough or you're meant to be this. You're not meant to be anything, man. Life is messy. Sometimes it's tough. Some days you just don't feel good. You just wake up and you go, you know what, I'm feeling kind of shit and that is okay. But if it's getting to the point that you feel like it's really affecting your life in a negative way, make sure you reach out. So check out reachout.com, the link is down below. Uh, and also, if it's someone that you know that you think could benefit from that as well, have a read yourself. There's uh, lots of tips there on how you deal with people that may be suffering from depression or anxiety. Have a look, there's heaps of resources there and we're super proud to be involved. How are you going over here, mate? Struggling. So that's the original. Oh, look at all the crap on it too. It's just sucked up. Oh, so it's coming out of it. The trick with these though is getting everything in the right position, like getting the filter in it. Like, look at that. The bag's crap. It's pretty bad, yeah. Have you got everything new? Like a whole I new... Think, I think what's happened is this car sat for a while. Oh, no, it's too small. What size is that? Maybe it's more actually to do with the crud. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Maybe the fuel tank needs a I bit think, of a recoil. I think the tank and this sock is blocked is what's actually happened. So the pump's all right, that's good news. Well, as in looks all right. But I have a feeling maybe it's actually blocked all this is what's happened. So is that the opposite uh, to what you're thinking? It's actually not getting enough fuel. I thought I put a big pump in there, but it's not a big pump. I think it's actually one that used to be in like an Evo or something. It's a 394, 295 litre per hour thing. Yeah, okay. But maybe the new pump has stirred up and sucked it up because we've been driving it more. Yeah. And it's sat there with Japanese fuel in it for ages, rusting away. The inside looks kind of okay from here. It's not that bad. A little bit yuck. Actually, you can see. As the fuel's swirling around in the bottom though, you can see it swirling there's around. A level it's a where it's sat, there's a level where it's sat about here and above that's rusted and below that's not. Yeah. So that must have been where it sat for a long time in Japan. Because the rest of this setup's actually pretty good. And it probably also needs a new fuel filter. Chances are whatever filter, whatever's made it through this. Yeah, it's now up there. Is in the filter, yeah. so maybe it's gonna be a matter of having to do it a few times. Just to get an indication of just how dirty this little fuel sock is, have a look at this. Look at that. That's just mud, man. Mm, it's mud. And this is, I think all been stirred up since it's being driven more and had more tanks of fuel through it, it's loosening all the crap. Yeah. But it's gone through that, which might have been why it was playing up in the first place. Mm. And now this new pump, it's done that through that as well. Cool. That needs to be all cleaned up. That needs to be cleaned up. Same pump can go in. So that's fine. That's perfect size. So this pump, 
says twisted on it. I miss that car. Never. First up, I'm going to install a brand new Raceworks fuel pump. It's E85 friendly, but also sized correctly for the kind of power this car will be making, which is not very much, but it will sound epic and super honky. The rest of the fuel system from inside the tank is pretty corroded, so a date with the sandblaster will remove the glazed up fuel and the crud. If you're storing your car for a long time, this is a perfect example of why it's best to leave it with a full tank of fuel wherever possible to avoid this moisture buildup. Once the pieces are cleaned up, they can all be reassembled, ready to drop back into the tank. So this is the old hangar, but it has been sandblasted. So There's a good. new pump in it and a sock. It's looking way better. But before we dump that back into the tank, we actually want to investigate cleaning the tank first so that we're not just cycling the same old stuff around and around again. We've already got rid of the old fuel yeah. and now the whole thing's kind of drying out, but we want to give it a proper mad clean. Then that can go in, that can go up. And then Marty, you got some exhaust fabrications to do. Yeah, so they're going to weld the exhaust up. So I've wrapped the dump pipe, the dump pipe's installed. Now I just got to join up the mad um, JDM exhaust up to the new V-band and yeah. then that's that done. And with the tank, it's just a matter of actually cleaning it out. It's not that bad. It's probably something we can DIY with some, there's like tank cleaning kits you can get. So I might try and grab one of those. The Savo, we'll show you how it's done. If I can find one and we can do it. And then that pump can go in, tank can go in. And then, yeah, that's all we're waiting for to finish the car. Uh, and these from England, right? Yeah, so these have to come from the UK. They're on their way, but that could take a day. It could take a week. I've had varying, I've had things arrive from the UK quicker than I have interstate. Yeah. But, and also I'm waiting for some N14 brakes because these are old and chat and you can't get them here. Well, now we have to wait. But you don't have to. We're not, we're not going to make you wait in nope. real disrespected time. Nope. So thank you for checking out this disrespected and respected nose episode. A little bit of both, wasn't it, Martin? It was. And um, yeah, I was hoping that we would just get it all finished. But yeah, just parts, right? You don't know until you start pulling it apart what's broken. Really happy with the timing belt's done as well. It's a huge job. Exhaust yep. done, which is a huge job. And the tank will be a relatively easy job, actually. Good job, Considering how, how gross it is in there. And slowly fixing up the old thing. Because old cars, they do surprise you with stuff like this. The 180 didn't. Yeah, Did it? It true. was actually, like, everything was really clean. And it's a similar vintage. But this one's got a bit of a more grotty past, I reckon. What a mad car, though. Whoever bought you this car, what a legend. Yeah, he's a legend. He's all right, yeah. I reckon. I wish he'd go back to Japan soon and we could go do something else. That'd be That's sick. That's true. Soon. We should do uh, that. See you next time. Of course, if you want to support the show, you can do that at MightyCarMods.com. we got lots of merch there. Uh, and as mentioned before, if you're feeling like you need some assistance with your mental health, check out ReachOut.com. And see you next time when we will be back for another episode It might not Mad be next time, Super though. Turbo. There might be stuff in between. If this stuff doesn't arrive, then there's nothing to show you yet. But the second there is some stuff to finish off, we'll show you. I'm starving, man. Bye-bye. So hungry. Salad sandwich. Yep, done.